If you are like me and you love working with a 32-inch 4K display because you love the real estate of it, when BenQ discontinued her SW320, which is a model right behind me here, a while back, it actually is quite a sad time because you can't get that display in the market. Well, BenQ have actually come up with their replacement to that model, and that is the SW321C. And it added a lot of great new features to the display that makes it really compelling and a really great upgrade. In fact, this is actually known internally in BenQ as the Emperor and it actually is one of the top displays in the SW line right now. What I'm going to do in this video is compare these two displays together, talk about its new features and how the improvement has actually come about in the years past since the SW320 launch. I'm Mart Suwansang, BenQ Ambassador. Let's get started. Before we start, subscribe if you are new and hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload a new video. If you are a current owner of the SW320, you may wonder how does the SW321C compare to the SW320, especially if you're using in an environment where it's running along each other side by side, or if you're actually looking to upgrade your SW320 to the brand new display. This video is going to answer all of those questions for you. So first of all, let's talk about the form factor of this display. Physically, on the outside, they look exactly the same. If you are across the room looking at these two displays, you probably won't be able to tell them apart. It's not until you move up closer to the display that you will see some differences between the two. For instance, on the SW321C, the panel has been upgraded to a 232-inch diagonal measurement. That means that the bezel on the left and the right side of this panel is going to be a little bit smaller than the one on the SW320. So that would be something that you're going to see right away. The thing is that this is also going to change the pixel pitch of these two displays as well, where the SW320 is going to have a tighter pixel niche compared to the SW321C. The thing is this, in a real world usage side by side, I can tell you that this is not really enough of a deal to become an issue where it's not like you're looking at a 2K versus a 4K display and you see each other side by side, you will notice that there is a pixel pitch difference. In this case, it's so close enough that it really doesn't matter. Now let's talk about the resolution of this panel a little bit. Both of these panels are 4K UHD resolution that is 3840 by 2160. They are a 10-bit IPS panel. That means they both have an amazing angle of view. So if you have people gathering around the display, the people on the side are still going to see true accurate colors with about the same brightness as the person who's standing right in the middle. The way how these two panels implement 10 bits are a little bit different. Where the SW320 is a true 10-bit panel, the SW321C is an 8-bit plus FRC. And here's the case. With the 8-bit plus FRC, what that means is that majority of a color signal is being carried over to 8-bit, and the FRC stands for frame rate control. Essentially, what frame rate control is doing is that it's changing the colors of some of the pixels very rapidly to simulate that extra 2-bit of color to get it to the billions of colors that you can see. The thing is that us as a human, we only need to see so many continuous tones for us to believe that we're seeing a true continuous tone, and that's what this display is doing. Some of you may wonder how come BenQ have gone down from the true 10-bit panel to an 8-bit plus FRC in this one. And part of it has to do with the cost factor of the whole thing. The thing is that when you really run on a true 10-bit panel, you're looking at the price of this display going up by about two to three times as much to get a true 10-bit panel. The problem is that when you go up in that much amount of price, it's not that you gain that much value in the process too. You don't. The thing is that there's only very few case scenarios where that comes in really handy. For example, if you work in a retouching house, and I mean high-end retouching house that are getting paid like hundreds of dollars per hour to just do high-end retouching. When you're zooming in your pictures at around 500%, having that true 10-bit panel is going to make a difference because you can then discern really what the color of those pixels are when you expand it that large. Where on an 8-bit plus FRC, it cannot do it as well as a true 10-bit panel. However, for those of you who are photographers and even professional like me, I do both photography and video editing, and I'm filming this right now, and I'm going to be editing them on this display it's not really a big difference at all. The other thing too is that using these two displays side by side on a daily basis, it's really hard for me to even tell that one is 10-bit and one is 8-bit plus FRC. They kind of all blend in together in this case. So unless you really have a case scenario where you need a true 10-bit, then look for a true 10-bit panel. Otherwise, to be honest with you, the 8-bit plus FRC versus a true 10-bit panel, it's really an overblown spec comparison kind of thing. So I would just not worry so much and just go out there and produce great pictures. 
When BenQ SW320 launched, they were using Technicolor to certify their display. In this case, the SW320 is Technicolor certified. That means it's really going to get true good colors, especially if you're doing video editing. However, recently, BenQ have moved over to different accreditation body for color certification. In this case, all the recent SW display are now CalMan Verify and Pantone Validated. CalMan specifically doing the verification for video color grading, while Pantone is actually doing all the testing for the Pantone color swatch in this case. That guarantees that if you're doing video work, you're going to get great color. And if you're doing print work, you're also going to get great colors that can be reproduced with Pantone colors as well. Both of these display are capable of hardware calibration and they have a 3D lookup table built into the display or a 3D LUT built into the display in this case. However, these LUTs have been changed and upgraded throughout the years where the SCB320 is still using a 14-bit 3D LUT that have come with the previous generation of SCB display. The SCB321C has been upgraded to a 16-bit 3D LUT. That means you get two more bits to reference color and that means a lot more colors that you can reference on this panel compared to the other one. To get the best result, result from your BenQ SCB display, the best software that you can use to calibrate this display is Palette Master Element. It's a software made by BenQ in this case. However, one thing to note too is that the SAP321C, BenQ have also opened up the 3D LUT in this display to third-party software. In this case, you can use a program by Lightspace or CalMan to run a calibration on this, and both of those software would have access to the 3D LUTs of this display, and that's something that's different than the SAP320. Both of these displays support HCR right out of the box. The format that they support between both of them is HCR10. However, the SW321C also have a new format added to it called HLG, Hybrid Log Gamma. So in this case, if you're doing any content editing in high dynamic range and you want the flexibility, the SW321C is going to give you the flexibility of choosing between those formats because it is supported by both compared to the SW320. Next up is connectivity. With all the SAV displays, you will always get two USB Type-A 3.1 ports on the side of the display along with an SD card reader. This makes it really easy, especially if your camera is still using SD card media. Now you have a hub on the side of the display that you can use along with two extra USB ports. The thing with the SW321C is that BenQ have gone in and added a more modern connection, in this case, a USB Type-C. With USB Type-C, in this case, implementation is really amazing because one cable between your laptop and the display will do everything, including powering your laptop because this display is capable of 60 watt power delivery. Not to mention that this one singular cable will also bring the signal to the display and also the signal to all the I.O. ports on the side of the display as well. This is something that's in contrast to the SAP320 where it does not have a USB Type-C nor can it actually charge any laptop in this case. So if you own a modern computer with a USB Type-C that can take power via the USB Type-C port, the SAP321C is going to be a much better option for you in this case because it's just one cable where this one you're going to have to link up at least two if not three cables to your laptop because you're going to need the display cable, you're going to need a USB uplink, and also you're going to need to power your laptop. Now let's talk about the shading hood. Both of these displays come with the shading hood right out of the box as you see behind me. And if you want to use your display in vertical orientation, both of them also come with the extension pieces so that you can use your shading hood in that orientation as well. Next up, what we need to talk about is the hockey puck. In the SW320, BenQ have included the first generation hockey puck with this one. There's a D-pad in the middle and you can still custom function your hockey puck. However, you're limited by the number one to three buttons that's actually on the hockey puck. The nice thing about the second generation hockey puck is that now it's weighted. The D-pad in the middle has been replaced with a dial that also works as a button. So the ergonomics of usage is actually much better. And they have also included an extra button that you can go in and custom function that so you can change it so that you can select or cycle through different inputs or cycle through additional color modes. The next thing we need to talk about here is a new feature that was introduced with the SW321C and that's called Uniformity Version 2. In this Uniformity Version 2, what BenQ have done at the factory is that not only do they pre-calibrate the display there, they have actually also divided the display into multiple different grids and they have actually calibrated those grids individually, store all these data in the lookup table of the display. So what you're going to get in the back end when you receive the display is that when you pull an image up, you're going to get super 
consistent and uniform colors. This also goes into the uniformity of the brightness as well, where if you look from left to right, you're not going to get uneven brightness or value to change very much from one side to the next. This is going to be fantastic for doing any kind of photo editing and any color critical work on it. That being said, SW320 is no slouch. They have been pre-calibrated from the factory as well. However, the calibration for this model wasn't as granular as the SW321C. And while we are talking about uniformity version 2, we also have to address one thing too, and that is backlight bleeding. Blacklight bleeding has been reduced so much in the SW321C that you can really see that it's not really showing so much light coming in from the side or the edge of the panel at all compared to the SW320, where that's actually showing you a lot more backlight bleeding that's happening. That is a byproduct of uniformity version 2. The other thing to note is that when you turn both of these display on, the SW320 uses the purple BenQ logo, where the SW321C uses a monochrome color. This way, if you're in a really dark environment, you're not getting splashed with those colors right as you turn the screen up. And speaking of screen, we need to talk about the coating of the display. BenQ have introduced a new matte coating, or what they call anti-reflective matte coating, on the SW321C. With this coating itself, it looks as if you're editing on a matte print the entire time. It's a really awesome coating that reflects very minimal amount of light. And in fact, it also diffuse a lot of light that's actually coming into the display. As you see here, in my studio setup, I have two large 48 inch umbrella lighting me up right now. One side's a little bit more intense than the other. However, you can see that the SW321C, it's barely showing any reflection in this case. Comparing that to the SW320. Better yet, what I'm gonna do here is turn the display off so that you can see the reflection behind me. You can see clearly that the SW320 is showing a lot more reflection, is diffusing a lot less of a light compared to the SW321C. One more thing I'm gonna do here is show you the reflections on the side there. Now that you've seen the new matte coating and its ability to diffuse light, you may wonder how do we clean the display? With the SW320, you can use my previous recommendation of using a microfiber cloth to clean the display or a light damp paper towel to really remove any of the tough debris that's hard to remove from there. Or you can even use a Swiffer duster in this case to remove any of the dust and lint debris from the screen. With the SW321C, the coating is much more sensitive, so definitely do not put any fingerprints on there because the oil from your finger can damage damage the coating. And to remove any dust or lint from the screen, BenQ in this case has shipped this display with a roller, or what in this case what my friend at BenQ called the AccuRoller. And here is the BenQ AccuRoller. This is a roller that comes with the SW320 and is designed specifically to clean this matte coating. So what you do in this case is you just roll it on the screen. Should this become sturdy, go ahead and rinse it in warm water. You can rub it a little bit too to get the dust and debris out. Leave it to dry overnight and then you'll be set. So along with the new matte coating, there is also a new hardware color mode on the SW321C and that's called Paper Color Sync. With Paper Color Sync, it is a hardware mode that instantaneously changes your display white point from a D65, where you're doing majority of your image editing on, to a D50. What that D50 is going to do is closely simulate the print that's going to come out from your printer. So when you're viewing a print on here, it's as if you're doing a soft proof, but on a hardware level of the BenQ display. You can definitely watch my video on Paper Color Sync, I've made a video review of it and also a guide on how to set up Paper Color Sync as well. But Paper Color Sync is going to bring what you see on your screen much closer to what you're able to get out on your print. This is a new color mode that's actually not built in with the SW320. So like I mentioned before, Paper Color Sync along the matte coating makes this display really fantastic if you are doing any kind of printing in-house or in-studio. Another thing to note is that the SW321C also has another color mode built in too, and that's called MBook. MBook color modes is designed specifically with the tweak necessary for it to closely match any Apple built-in display. So for instance, if you're using a MacBook Pro or any Apple product, in this case, that has a built-in display, an iMac or a MacBook Pro, you'll be able to plug it in here, set it to MBook, and the color should match almost exactly. And that's something that this model has compared to the SW320.
So if you have the SW320 already, the SW321C has a lot of great new features with many improvements that's going to make it a really great display to replace the SW320. But if you're like me, you can also use them side by side in a dual screen environment and they also work fantastically well with each other. What I've done in my workflow is that I've made the SW321C my primary panel and the SW320 my secondary panel. This way I'm always color grading on this one and I'm using that one as a secondary reference for color grading. Another thing to note too is that running two hardware calibrated display in a dual screen format or even more than that is actually really great because all of the adjustment is actually done at the panel level. This way you're not relying on the adjustment from the ICC profile that's controlling the output from the video card to change the way how the color is looking on the display. What this guarantee is that between both the display I'm always proving super good accurate colors individually and not one based on the other display. So I hope that you find this comparison between BenQ2 32-inch hardware calibrated display helpful. If you have any questions about what I've gone over, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe to my channel if you are new, and hit on the notification bell to so be updated every time I upload a new video. And until next time, I just write.